Hello and welcome to Mandi Life. This is Sucheta Dilal. Those of you who have been watching this video uh, blog, you know that I've been banging on about large amounts of unclaimed money that's lying with the government. Unclaimed money belonging to people like us. Just a few weeks ago, I said this was 2 lakh crore, which is really significant, more than our health budget and our education budget. We did a detailed report, which was released by well-known banker K.V. Kamath. And I'm back again talking about the same thing. So what is different this time? So far, we studied money that's blocked. When I say people like you and me, I usually mean people who are paying taxes. This time, we've done a little more digging thanks to the help that we have from well-known activists who filed right to information applications and have come up with more numbers about how people with low income, but in the formal sector, are also being harassed by the fact that their money is tied up in government and runs into tens of thousands of crores. So here's what we find, that nobody, but nobody cares about this money that belongs to you and me. In fact, surprisingly, there was a bit of discussion in this NDA government over the last 10 years. In fact, five years after his passing and nearly a decade after his 2015-16 budget, Indian savers really have many reasons to remember the late finance minister, Arun Jaitley. His tenure probably marked the last time that there was any serious conversation within the government about unclaimed belonging to the people, vast amounts that remained captive. Interestingly, he understood the situation really well. I've told you what we have done. I've told you that 2 lakh crore is locked up. I've told you in the past that another one or maybe even one and a half lakh crore is in the pipeline, ready to become unclaimed funds with the Reserve Bank of India alone because money lies dormant for 10 years before it is transferred. Now, the latest is that a right to information application was filed by someone called Akash Goel, who's an entrepreneur, a management graduate, and an engineer, which reveals a plight of savers recognized by the late finance minister, Arun Chetli. In fact, let's start with what he said in his budget in 2015-16. Addressing the speaker, he says, Madam Speaker, the situation with regard to dormant employee provident fund accounts and the claims ratio of ESI is too well known to be repeated here. It has been remarked that both EPF and ESI have hostages rather than clients. Further, the low paid worker suffers deductions greater than better paid workers in percentage terms. Isn't this scandalous? And if it's so well known, why hasn't anything happened? The deductions continue for low paid workers. 10 years have gone by. Nothing has been done to free these hostages. In fact, the last significant effort was 2014-15-16 when Mr. Jetley commissioned a report leading to this budget statement, leading to money being transferred to the Senior Citizens Welfare Fund, which was created for the purpose, but still not even properly utilized. But my case is very different. I feel this is our money. The first effort and legal obligation on the government of India should be to return our money to us. Only when you cannot find a true owner, because the person has probably passed away and has no claimants and heirs, can it go to the Senior Citizens Welfare Fund or the Depositor Education Fund or the Investor Awareness Fund? This is not a strange ask. In fact, most developed countries have such a legal obligation, which India doesn't have. They call it a legal obligation to reunite unclaimed assets with their rightful owners. It's the government's job, it's the government's duty to do it. I've written about it in the past. Here's a link that we're showing you below. We've talked about what various countries, all the recognized developed countries, and we say we are now an important economy, right? It's time we start doing this. Instead, Unclaimed mo money is growing at the rate of 15 to 20%, which is higher than inflation, higher than the growth of the economy. In fact, more than twice that number. And this ought to be agitating you and me, but 
I'm sure you're going to listen with one ear and get it out of the other without bothering. The day you get agitated, things are going to change. Now let's look at what happens to lower paid workers who are part of ESI. Shocking as it seems, Mr. Harsh Rungta, who is a well-known investment advisor, has put some numbers on what Mr. Jetley said. He says the example of a 15 employee earning 15,000 rupees in the formal sector. You know how much money is deducted? 42%. And these deductions are because it's supposed to benefit you. You go to an ESI hospital, your money is in a provident fund, it's multiplying, you're supposed to get it back. But if it doesn't come to you, if ESI is so difficult to access that you never use it, that money is wasted. If the employee provident fund finally ends up blocking it for various reasons, that money is gone. And this deduction of 42% is so huge that if it is forfeited, then this is as good as the employee being taxed at a rate equivalent to someone earning five crore annually. That's what Mr. Rungta says. There's no surprise then that Bank Bazaar has estimated that unclaimed funds lying with the EPFO are as much as 25,000 crore. Mr. Rungta also has written in his recent column in Business Standard that 5 lakh dormant accounts exist in EPFO and this is the most luxurious fund manager because the last valuation was done in 2019 when there was a deficit of 37,000 crore. This is like a Ponzi scheme where money, fresh money comes in because the government doesn't change anything and money remains locked up, so it's 25,000 crore buffer exists. Now let's come to what Akash Goel, our activist engineer did. He filed an RTI application, which reveals that 54,657.87 crore is lying as unclaimed money in inoperative EPF accounts. The money belongs to at least 5 lakh people. This number is twice what Bank Bazaar had said, right? Now, Mr. Goel has filed another RTI application with the National Savings Institute under the Ministry of Finance. What does this institute do? It is responsible for collecting data of 10 small savings schemes. And he filed this application just last month in September 2024. The National Savings Institute is supposed to digitally collect, collate and maintain small savings data, apply data analytics and get insights on what this money is. It is also supposed to ensure timely remittance of these schemes and reconcile information with the Reserve Bank of India to be used for forecasting. When the RTI application was filed, NSI could only provide very sketchy data. It provided unclaimed savings in nationalized banks for the years 2016, 19 and 21. So look at it. Its job is to collect money and ensure timely remittances. Last numbers it provided is for 2021 and a few years in between. It provides a list. We are showing you the reply of 20 banks. Many of them have not even bothered. Now, if NSI is toothless, even though it's part of finance ministry, that eight banks alone have given data, the rest of them don't give a damn about NSI, shut down the institute. It's functioning at taxpayers' money. Now, what is the data? It says that a sum of 1,195 crore was lying unclaimed as per the data of eight banks. The banks that did not give the data are much bigger. So this number can even go up by a factor of 10 because the biggest of them is State Bank of India and it has not provided data. So this is the level of disdain. We are showing you this chart even as I speak. Take a look at how they treat NSI. Now, Senior Citizens Welfare Fund disclosed to Akash Goel that unclaimed deposits are 19,828 crore. What are these? Postal deposits, national savings certificates, money lying in schemes that have been discontinued. It belongs to about 30 million individuals. This data is also patchy because it is not 100%. So Sukanya Samriddhi account data is not available, as you can see from the chart that we are showing you on the screen. This means the government does not care whether your hard-earned money is recorded, listed, and whether you are able to claim it at all. 
I've also been pointing out, just as a recap, that the two largest pools are money with the Reserve Bank of India under the Depositor Education Fund, which was 78,213 crore at the end of March. I told you at least a lakh and a half is on the way to going there in small drips and drabs every year. And these small amounts are in thousands of crores, right? The Investor Education and Protection Fund, which was the first to be set up by the government, held and this again is not done by the government. This is a calculation by Harsh Rungta, who looked at 1,516 companies and their valuation. As of July 2023, it held 82,199 crore. IEPF has admitted in a Lok Sabha reply that another 5,714 crore at the end of July 2023 was corporate benefits like dividends and interest. So add the two, 82,199 crores until July 2024 and this, and you have over 88,000 crore lying blocked. And every day that the market goes up, this number is going higher. It may have even reached 90,000 crore now. Unclaimed funds for the government now total nearly three times India's health budget, double the education budget. Despite the magnitude of this wealth belonging to the people not being used, lying around in various pools, there is no public outcry. The lack of awareness and inertia around this issue has prevented any demand creating this legal obligation to track down rightful owners. Unclaimed money could be better utilized by creating. We have given a lot of suggestions. We've done a report. We have said create a central repository of births and deaths, Put all this data in a centralized place, use technology and identification technology, revamp the process of probate of wills, succession, airships, and create a robust verification mechanism. This mechanism should be robust enough to prevent fraud. Bulk of the money would then be reunited by genuine claimants. That's what the global experience shows. Even then, Barely 75% of that money will actually be reclaimed. You will still have more than 25% of it, which can be used for social work, good pressing social needs for this category of people whom the money belongs to. One area that requires immediate attention is India's aging population. India is becoming an older country. The number of senior citizens are going to be 173 million by 2025. We have no services, we have no long-term plans, we have no proper rules for retirement homes, we have reverse mortgage that doesn't work. It needs some money to be taking longevity risk. In most countries, this is borne by the government. Here you have a big pool of money whose interest alone could help. We need thinking, we need positive thinking, we need action. Unclaimed money sitting with the government represents an opportunity for the country. High time, we demanded this accountability and we demanded not only rightful owners be traced, but the proper utilization of this money so that we have better health care, geriatric care, and a semblance of social security. Remember, only a small percentage of government officials get pension. They are the ones who don't want to do anything. The majority of people are like us. We don't have pensions. We need this money because it's our money. It either should come back to us or be utilized for us. Please wake up, spread the word, and start making a noise about it. Thank you.